you're not going to comply? Are you not going to comply? Dude, he's not physically resistive. Your partner's got his hands on him. He's in handcuffs. He's complying. Out comes the pepper spray, and he sprays him. And you think he'll fucking words Nobody bother me, bro? Nobody gives a f man. What are you going to do, do about it? Do you think your words bother me? What are you going to do about it, fat you boy? You think I'm scared? Nothing. Come on, go. Nothing. Get sued, are fat you ass you gonna comply, man. You, you going to comply with us or not? Me? You pepper sprayed somebody in handcuffs. Like, you're not avoiding the lawsuit. Can the police pepper spray a handcuffed man just because he's running his mouth? Here's some brand new exclusive footage from a federal civil rights lawsuit just filed by my friend Chris Wiest, a Kentucky civil rights lawyer. We had a great discussion about this footage, about the lawsuit he just filed on behalf of this guy, as well as some great general advice he has when potential clients of ours are interacting with police officers. I'll post the full lawsuit up at the blog, links in the description. We also discussed a few more of his cases, one of which involves some breaking news, so make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you don't miss that upcoming video. I'll let Chris explain what happened. So this came in right around Christmas of last year. My understanding is he was living with a girlfriend. Uh, they were arguing. They both called 911. He wanted 911 there to move his stuff out with police present just to, you know, and she called 911 because she wanted him out, but recognized that he had his stuff there and she wanted the cops to be there while he moved his stuff out just to make sure that he was moving his stuff out. So there was... There was a domestic spat. I would not describe it. There was no allegations either way of anybody engaging in any violence. Well, the police show up. Um, it's the uh, city of Berea, Kentucky police. It's uh, um, outside of Lexington, Kentucky, um, kind of in the central part of the state. There's two officers that are on the scene, a guy by the name of Sergeant um, Ward and um, an officer by the name of um, Cody Jones. And Cody Jones at the time was doing his field training with um, Robert Ward, uh, the sergeant. And I thought that that was really interesting because he's, he's like a baby cop that's like being trained. And this is the example that he's being trained by. And so um, there's this interaction. They allege that he is engaged in disorderly conduct. Music is engaged in disorderly conduct and alcohol intoxication. Music denies all of that. There's no indications from anyone about music, smelling of alcohol or anything else, and nobody's articulating that, but obviously they're looking for an excuse to have arrested him. What I find the most interesting thing about the alcohol intoxication charge is like, he's driving there. Where's your DUI charge? Like that's the serious thing that's going on, right? Like, where's your DUI charge? Why didn't you breathalyze him? Why didn't you do any of that? And so it's obvious this is all a cooked up you know, pretext because they're mad at him because he's mouthy and he is mouthy in the interactions with the, with the police. Um, and, uh, you know, what, what I found most significant about that is they get him in handcuffs. They've ostensibly placed him under arrest. Cody Jones has his hand on him. He's obviously under control. This is still moving, right? Um, he is still verbally, you know, argument, argumentative with the police. Um, cause he's not real happy about the fact that he's being basically maliciously and falsely arrested for a bunch of garbage that he didn't do. You think he'll f***ing words Nobody bother me, bro? Nobody give a f***, man. What are you going to do, do about it? Do you think your words bother me? What are you going to do about it, fat you boy? You think I'm scared? Nothing. Come on, go. Nothing. Get sued, are you fat ass mother f***ing man. Fuck you. You going to comply with us, you? You gonna comply with us or not? Me? Gosh, don't. Put him in the f***ing car. Come on. We'll see who's f***ing tough. Unlock the f***ing car. It's unlocked. Dude. It's unlocked. Put him in the f***ing car. Okay. Not in this one. Okay. Backseat. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. By the way, on the, on the back end of this, they dismissed the state charges with a stipulation of probable cause. They thought that they were going to avoid the lawsuit. I'm like, you... You, you pepper sprayed somebody in handcuffs. Like, you're not avoiding the lawsuit. You know, so he's in handcuffs. You see him, you know, getting mouthy um, with the police officer and then the sergeant, you know, you're not going to comply? Are you not going to comply? Dude, he, he's not physically resistive. Your partner's got his hands on him. He's in handcuffs. He's complying. Out comes the pepper spray and he sprays him. And, you know, he's in handcuffs. So um, it's a fantastic use of force case. The damages aren't that high. He goes to the jail. He's suffering sort of this, you know, the effects of this uh, 
uh, pepper spray, um, gets released the next day, goes home, showers. That does reactivate the pepper spray, by the way, when you shower. They don't decontaminate them in the jail. I don't know why they didn't decontaminate them in the jail. So he's got about a 24-hour where this stuff is like on him, exposed still. And then, you know, he says it mostly dissipated, although he had some respiratory issues. Saw a doctor a couple weeks later. Yeah. The pepper spraying was essentially just the punishment for running his mouth. Uh, yes. yes. And they didn't even decontaminate him at all? No. Right. And I think that goes to show that it was it was to punish him for you know doing what he's supposed to be allowed to do, criticizing the police under the First Amendment. Well, you'll see there's a couple claims, use of force. There's the uh, Cody Jones for allowing the sergeant to do it. At one point, Jones steps away so he can be pepper sprayed. Well, you know, you have a duty to intervene, not to f help facilitate the, the, the Fourth Amendment um, violation. And then, you know, First Amendment retaliation, I think, were the claims we brought in this case, obviously. So, I mean, it's I think it's a pretty good case. I think it all just depend on which, you know, which jurors you get if, if you end up at trial, you know. Are, well, are they going to are they going to side with the Constitution or are they going to just weigh whether or not they like your client as opposed to the police officers? Well, you know, you, you're always dealing with the he had a coming defense and the defendants are going to certainly advance that defense to the extent the judge lets them. Um, and I'll be howling about it. And, you know, that's just the nature of these cases. So, yeah, I think that's one of the most difficult part of these cases is just ultimately this you know, facing a jury in the end where you can end up with somebody who, you know, 99% of the time claims to support the constitution. You know, they're a strong second amendment supporter. They have flags all over their truck, but at the same time you show them that video and they're not thinking about the constitution now, like they would if the second amendment was involved. What they see in their mind is, oh, well, this is one of those when assholes collide moments. Yeah. What, what, I mean, what is the, what is, what is the way to defeat this or to explain this to people? And that's kind of what, you know, my freedom is scary deal with it is kind of along that lines. Like, like, why can't you realize that this is not just, you know, when assholes collide, this is an interaction between a government and a citizen. And you have to set aside your feelings and focus on the constitution here. I mean, what, how do you, how would you address that to, to a jury where you have these types of, of potential jurors to try to, pound that into their head. Yeah. I, at the end of the day, I think I've got to see who's on the jury panel, but you know, God country and apple pie, you know, my, my God country and apple pie closing where, you know, basically either everybody has constitutional rights or no one does, depending on your political persuasion, you know, you may agree or disagree with certain aspects of the constitution, but, but that's the beauty of it. It's there to protect all of us and all of our rights. And if you don't stand up for Josh Music's constitutional rights, including his rights to engage in, you know, arguably offensive speech, including his rights not to have excessive force imposed on him when he's not resisting. If you don't stand up for his rights here today, right, who's going to stand up for your rights when some tyrant in D.C. comes in and takes your guns away? When some tyrant in D.C. comes in and, you know, has an FBI arresting parents at school board meetings, if you don't stand up for the Constitution, ladies and gentlemen, here and now, when it counts, when it's hard, if Josh Music doesn't have rights, no one has rights. And so you're going to get the God Country and Apple Pie closing for me. What kind of advice do you would you give to people when they're interacting with police? I mean, there's there are people who would advise to you know be confrontational, you know, am, am I being detained sort of stuff. And then, then there are other people who would advise to sort of just keep your mouth shut, be polite and cooperative and, and go talk to your lawyer later. I have some advice generally about those interactions. In interacting with the police, you need to be cognizant of what you're doing and where you're doing it at. I had a, um, a case, a lady got arrested at a school board meeting for not wearing a mask, face mask. And I, you know, I brought a federal claim. She was charged in state court. And ultimately she got, you know, unfortunately, a disorderly conduct conviction wasn't from the refusal to leave. It wasn't from the, you know, sitting there without a mask on. That would have been, I would have been able to deal with that. It was because she raised her voice and got very, very argumentative and confrontational to the point that it was kind of disturbing everybody around her. And the problem with that was, you know, she wasn't under arrest at the time, obviously. I mean, she walked into the disorderly conduct charge as a result of getting upset at the police. So Chris's rule number one is you've got this thing between your ears. It's called a brain. And think about what you're doing in that situation when you're interacting with the police. I think, 
either of those ways of dealing with it, whether it's articulating your rights in a calm, collected manner, or, you know, sort of remaining polite but silent and not incriminating yourself and then going and seeing a lawyer later. Either approach, I think you got to think between, you know, with what's between your head first and remain calm and remain collected and not get upset. You know, don't threaten the police. I would advise to not even threaten to sue the police, not there and then. I mean, yeah, that, I never, put, that never sounds good afterwards during a deposition. Never. <laughs> Never, as we're going to see. I mean, it just, it's not, it's just not the right way to handle the situation. Um, but I think, you know, can you articulate, you know, officer, am I free to go? Am I being detained? If you're asking those questions in a calm, cool, collected manner, I think that that is perfectly acceptable. And that is in a perfectly, that is a perfectly acceptable way to do it. If you're raising your voice, if you're screaming at the officer because you're getting upset because you know he's violating your rights or she's violating your rights, that's not the way to do it. Um, you know, cooler heads always prevail and you're going to win. You know, there were some lawyers, they were down, I think in Alabama and the police just wrongfully arrested them and they, they, they let them up in court afterwards. So client, like giving them evidence. Um, there was a big deal down there. And that guy, again, calm, cool, collected. You don't have to answer questions. You should not answer questions. You have a right not to incriminate yourself. Um, no one ever, advances the ball by, by, you know, providing information. There's the first amendment auditors that are out there. Um, you know, the state ID laws are different in every state. You probably need to know what that is. If you're going to go out and do that kind of activity, you're going to do like a first amendment audit. You're going to like record police stations, record jails, you know, from, from public sidewalks. Um, you know, you should know what the, what the, what the laws are in each state in terms of uh, being required to provide identification and you need to comply with them. One of the things that's hard for people to understand is sometimes I'll have a case where somebody's been arrested for one thing and they obviously didn't do it, but they did something else. And and people don't seem to understand that if if it's any misdemeanor, they can arrest you for it. Even in a state like Ohio doesn't allow minor misdemeanor arrests by statute, but constitutionally in Ohio, when I do Ohio cases, you know, those minor misdemeanor arrests, if the police can point to you haven't committed any, it'll be a, 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 a get out of jail free card for the police in a civil rights case in Ohio because they've got the basis to do it. So, you know, you got to be careful with that kind of thing with what I call, you know, either non-charged or other charged defenses. Because if they've got a single reason to arrest you, they're going to be good with the arrest. And again, you know, remaining calm. I think you're going to search your rights. I'm not going to answer questions. I'm not going to, you know, I have a right not to talk to you. I'm not going to talk to you. I think you can do that. I think you could say, you know, am I under arrest? Am I being detained? You know, I think articulating those things is helpful, particularly for you and I, because, you know, if we have video, it's helpful, right? Then we're not having to argue about whether or not they were free to go or whether or not they felt like they were free to go because they've asked. So yeah. as long as it's done in a calm, cool, collected manner, people, you know, when the rights are being violated, they have a, a reaction, a visceral reaction sometimes to get very upset. I would urge folks not to do that. Whoever keeps their cool and is thinking up here about what they're doing and what they're saying is going to be better off than the folks that are, you know, popping off because they're upset. So that, that would be what I would say. As always, thanks for watching. It's always a fantastic opportunity for all of us to hear Chris explain what he's been up to. If you search past videos on the channel, you'll see some of our prior conversations. Chris practices both in Kentucky and Ohio, so if you're in need of a civil rights lawyer in those states, that's who I would try first. And I'll put his contact information in the description. You know, I get a steady stream of phone calls from people across the country searching for a civil rights lawyer. And as I try to explain frequently for the benefit of my staff, I only handle cases in West Virginia. And if you watch my channel, you know that I already have my hands busy doing that. I'm still working on compiling a referral database for all 50 states for people looking for civil rights lawyers. So if you are one or you know of one in other states, please have them reach out to me for inclusion on that list. If you have a West Virginia matter that you want to speak to me about, or even something else you want to speak to me about, I do have a limited number of consultations I try to do with people per week. If you are interested in that, I do have an actual office with people answering the phones who can set you up. If you enjoy this type of content, reviewing police interactions and discussing the underlying constitutional law, please subscribe. Hit the bell notification as well. Keep the channel growing. Share it with your friends. Remember, freedom is scary. Deal with it. I'll see you next time. Thank you.